In this video, we're going to go over how to draw energy level diagrams, also known as orbital diagrams. Okay, so this is now our new version of what we used to draw as the Bohr-Rutherford diagram. Um, what it's going to show is the relative energies of the electrons, and we're going to show the various different types of orbitals, sublevels, and how the electrons are filling those. So remember, the quantum mechanical model has two electrons per orbital. This is really important for this um, particular lesson. So um, in order for us to start filling orbitals, we need to know what order they get filled in. Um, and this is where the off-bow diagram comes in. So all of the different sublevels do have a very specific order in which they get filled. The 1s gets filled first, followed by the 2s and the 2p, and then the 3s and the 3p, and then something weird happens here where we kind of jog to the fourth energy level of 4s, and then we go back to 3d, then we go to 4p, and then weirder and weirder things start to happen as we get further away from the nucleus. Now, we need to memorize how these this sort of filling in this order goes. Um, one way that you can do that is by creating this diagram here. And this is pretty easy to recreate for yourself. What you're going to do is you're going to write all the one, uh, sorry, all the S's on top of each other going along here. You're going to same to do the same for the P's starting at two because there's no P's at one. You're going to say do the same for the D's, and then you're going to do the same for the F's. Okay. Um, and then the way we read this diagram is we can follow it through. Maybe I'll do a different color here with arrows. So we read them on the diagonal and we'd fill the 1s first. And then we're going to go back to this line and fill the 2s next. And then we're going to go back to the beginning of this line and fill the 2p next. And then the 3s. Okay. Go back to this line, fill the 3p, then the 4s. And so we can keep following this along. And then this helps us get some of the weird ones like the 3d, the 4p, the 5s, and so on. Um, so you're just reading them on the diagonals and going through the diagram this way. Okay, so we have some other rules for filling these orbitals. Um, and they do have some specific names based on the scientists that are associated with them. So first off, the Pauli exclusion principle says that no two electrons in an atom have the same set of quantum numbers. Really, you don't need to worry about this um, because we are not covering quantum numbers, but just know kind of that uh, this rule does exist. The off-bound principle says that a energy sublevel must be filled before moving on to the next higher sublevel. So that was the off-bound diagram that we just looked at. Our next rule is Hund's rule. And it says that one electron is placed into each of the orbitals before a second one is added. Um, so we're going to spread them out before doubling them up. Okay, and we'll see what that looks like. And then finally, electrons in the same orbital spin in opposite directions. And we're just going to use that uh, and show that by showing an up arrow or a down arrow. To get started with an orbital diagram, you first need to draw in your arrow. And then you also need to label energy. So this just shows that our orbitals are increasing in energy level as we get further away from the nucleus. Okay, so this is basically taking place of all of those uh, orbits that we drew for our Bohr-Rutherford diagram. Now, according to our rules in our off-bow diagram, we need to start filling this diagram with electrons. For sulfur, sulfur has an atomic number 16, so it's got 16 electrons. All right, so we're going to start filling, and our rules say that we got to fill up the 1s first. So to show electrons in there, I'm just going to use these half arrows. And remember, two electrons can fit into one orbital. So I'm going to draw one going up and one going down just to show that they have opposite spins. Okay, so that satisfies all of our rules. Now, we want to keep going, and we need 16 arrows basically on this diagram in order for it to be finished because uh, we have 16 electrons, and each arrow is an electron. 
So the next sub uh, level we fill is 2s. So I'm going to put 2 in here, and that makes 4 electrons total. And then we get to the 2p orbitals. And here we have three different types. We have x, y, and z. We're going to put 1 in each first. And that's because one of our rules says that we have to put 1 in each first before we start doubling up. So that's 2, 4, 5, 6, 7. And then we go 8, 9, and 10. Okay. Uh, we still got six more to place, so we're going to fill our next orbital up, which is our 3s. So that's 12. And then our 3p orbitals, again, there's three of them, so 12. So we got 13, 14, 15. And then we double one up for our 16. It doesn't really matter if that uh, last one goes in x, y, or z. I just put it in x, but like it would be right if you put it in y or z too. Okay. Um, so this would be a completed diagram for sulfur, a completed orbital diagram. You wouldn't actually need to draw all of these in. I just have them here in my template because it makes it a little bit easier for me to draw these out. Uh, okay, so that's sulfur. Now, what if we had an ion? What if we had a bromide ion? Well, we know that bromine has 35 electrons and a bromide ion has a negative one charge. So we're going to add one more electron and we should have 36 electrons total then. Okay, so we're just going to start filling up again, starting with 1s, that's 2, and then 2s is 2, 2p we go singles, and then we double, so that's 10, 3s is 12, okay, and then we got 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, so we got to keep going, 4s is next, which makes 20, and then the next set of suborbitals we got to fill are the three Ds, okay? So we're going to go 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. We need to do that before we start doubling up. And then 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. So we're up to 30. So our next set of um, orbitals we're going to fill are our Ps. So we go 1, 2, 3, and then four, five, six, and that makes 36 electrons. So this would be the completed orbital diagram for a bromide ion. Now that's for negative ions. When you have positive ions, something like the magnesium ion, which is Mg2+, you'll take the number of electrons you should have, so 12 electrons, and we need to subtract two electrons. So our final diagram is going to have 10 electrons. And what I suggest you do is you draw out the diagram. So let's fill it in. We're going to go 2, 4, and then 6, 8, 10, 11, 12. And our rules say then that we need to take the electrons from the highest um, main energy level uh, suborbital. So if we're looking at these numbers here, the threes, the twos, the two and the one, this three is higher than any of the other numbers. So the two electrons are going to come out of here. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to erase that. And then this would be our completed diagram for a magnesium ion. Okay. It gets tricky when we get up to these ones up here, because if we had, say, some electrons in here and some in here, for example, um, and we needed to take away electrons, because this 4 is a bigger number than the 3, the electrons come from the 4s first before the 3d. Okay, So you'll see that for some of the transition metal ions, and you'll do some of that in the practice. Um, and so I'm just going to leave it there, and you can move on to your next task.